Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Journey with me as I go down various rabbit holes to explore the best Plan B options for you. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to the rabbit hole on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. Throughout my journey in finding a Plan B, I've gone down numerous rabbit holes to figure out which one works for me. Since I've done some of this research already, I only think it's right to bring that information to other CRNAs to help aid in your search. As always, it's important for you, the listener, to do your own research and form your own opinions. Everyone's situation is unique, and a plan B that works for one CRNA doesn't necessarily work for another. Self-awareness is the key in any decision you make, since you must have an accurate grasp of your strengths, weaknesses, and goals. To start off this series, let's begin by going in-depth with how you should examine a potential plan B. Number one is passion. To me, this is the starting point for all of this. There are a ton of paths out there that anyone looking to break into something new can take. What are the things that you're most passionate about? What do you already spend time doing that you could potentially turn into something profitable? Do you love animals? Maybe you look into pet setting. Maybe you love wood carving, but you can't store all of your creations anymore. Might be time to open up that Etsy store. Personally, I'm passionate about financial education, taking control of retirement, and my own time freedom. As such, I've crafted on-call capital to support those values. Maybe you're passionate about travel or fitness. Perhaps you enjoy doing things with your hands. Renovations and furniture building come to mind. Are you a people person who likes educating others on your areas of expertise? Maybe you love painting or crocheting and you wanna open an online store. Whatever that passion is, you can probably find a way to share it with the world. Number two, the beginning is the end is the beginning. Okay, so do you guys remember the Smashing Pumpkins song, The Beginning is the End is the Beginning? You may remember it from the trailer from the Watchmen movie. Did you know that it was actually one of four versions of the song and that it was originally on the soundtrack of the 1997 Batman and Robin movie, which I bought at the time? Horrible movie, pretty decent soundtrack, and now I've dated myself. But the point of bringing this up is that that song was the slower, more deliberate, and thought-provoking version. That segues into the way you should begin your new venture with the end in mind. Are you looking for something that will replace your current income? And what would that look like? Are you looking for part-time income or just a little something to supplement what you're already doing? For instance, if you like concerts, maybe you get a part-time gig at a local coliseum as a stagehand. You were going to be there anyway, but now you don't have to pay for tickets when the bands come to town. Whatever you're doing, make sure you're clear about what your intentions are. Be deliberate when dipping your toes into something new. Number three is time commitment. Time is a finite resource. So how much do you want to spend on your new venture? If you already work full time, maybe you're okay with eight to 10 hours per week. If you already work part time, then maybe you're willing to put more time into a side gig. However, not every plan B is able to be broken down to just a few hours a week. If you're into fix and flips, you may need to spend large chunks of time on a given project. Plus, many businesses require more time up front before you get into any sort of a maintenance phase. Know what you want and what you're willing to get into beforehand, which leads us to our next point. Number four, time and energy management. Time commitment is one thing, but how you manage that time is another. You will need to properly schedule time to accomplish tasks for your new venture. Personally, I find that I'm very busy for most of the day, but I have chunks of time in the mornings and evenings that I can schedule to do things. Since I'm a morning person, I would rather wake up a little earlier to get things done. How does your plan B line up with the time you actually have available? And how can you adjust? 
If you currently work four 10 hour shifts per week, maybe you can schedule tasks on your day off in addition to smaller tasks during lunch breaks. So long as you get those, that is. Number five, upfront and maintenance costs. In truth, there is little reason to spend much, if anything, to test out different plan B ideas, at least in the beginning. You can typically find out enough to get started on a venture by reading books, articles, and reviews, listening to podcasts, or by looking up videos on YouTube. In terms of low-cost marketing, you can begin developing your own following on social media, then build on that through a blog or a newsletter. You can always make adjustments later, but it's more important to get started than to know everything about everything up front. Try to find a way to start that balances the amount you pay up front with the amount of risk you're willing to take. For instance, I looked into starting a brew pub several years ago with a brewer and a restaurateur. We were planning to put in a little bit under $100,000, and the banks basically laughed at us. It's not that our business plan couldn't hold up to scrutiny, but they didn't think we had enough skin in the game for a venture that could cost nearly a million dollars. Since restaurants have an 85% fail rate or worse, it's no surprise that the bank wouldn't go for it with only around 10% collateral. That experience told me something about my own investing. The more of my own money that I have to put into a side gig, the bigger risk I'm taking. Since that time, I've been much more selective about putting money into a venture. For on-call capital, I've purchased year-long memberships with Wix for my website and three-year domain coverage. MailChimp for email and list management, as well as shorter memberships with LinkedIn Sales Navigator and WeConnect to test them out. I also have a Buzzsprout account to manage the podcast distribution. Beware of the nickels and dimes, though, because they can really start to add up over time. Number six, knowledge and expertise required. So you want to get into land development, but you've never actually looked at zoning laws. Or you want to look into becoming an expert witness, but you've never been on the inside of a courtroom. Ooh, I know. You love barbecue and you want to open your own food truck, but you've never actually made your own barbecue before or managed any kind of a professional kitchen. Well, you're going to need to educate yourself on whatever it is you're interested in pursuing. To piggyback on our previous point, there are cheap ways to do this through books, YouTube, and podcasts, but there are also expensive programs that you can undertake, some of which cost in the tens of thousands of dollars. If your side gig doesn't already line up with some of the things you already know, you're going to learn today or else your business won't even get off the ground. Number seven, sweat equity. When I was growing up, my parents owned a few single family properties. We would drive down from middle Georgia to the Tampa Bay area on the weekends when a resident moved out to do the turnover ourselves. New carpets or linoleum, paint on the walls, fixing cabinet handles and the like. Sometimes the place was a mess and the bathrooms always needed a deep cleaning. I thought that the only way to make money in real estate was to do the work yourself but I would unlearn that later. Two things from the experience though, were that I'm no handyman and that no one is too good to clean a bathroom. You do what you've got to do. Does your plan B require you to get your hands dirty? As Brandon Turner from Bigger Pocket says, you can have hustle, money, or knowledge. And to get anywhere, you need at least two of those three. So will your venture require a lot of hard work? If you're not willing to put that work in yourself, you'll need some cash set aside and a good team. Number eight, organizations and systems required. One of the most important things to get a handle on is the organization process. What are the administrative tasks you will have with a business and how will you handle them? You need to be able to track what you make and what you spend for tax deduction purposes. You also need to figure out when to pay any taxes you may end up owing. Do you want to pay quarterly to avoid the big bill in April? Another big question is whether you should incorporate. You'll have to think about setup fees and establishing your corporation, and you'll have more paperwork and business tax rules to learn. The good news is that most of the time you can avoid this until you start growing and earning more significant amounts of money. You may want to consider having a bookkeeper handle some of this as well, depending on your expertise and financial situation. Number nine, dealing with setbacks and falling in love with the process. The vast majority of folks who get into a side gig experience obstacles, and many still experience an occasional failure. As they say, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You're not counting on this plan B to pay your bills, at least not right away, so you can afford to experiment. This is about the fourth time I've recorded this single podcast. I keep revising and finding different things to say, but I realize this version still won't be perfect. It's just as good as it needs to be right now. Don't let criticism bring you down. 
just because someone leaves a bad review or unsubscribes from your newsletter doesn't mean you need to close up shop. As an entrepreneur, you'll need a bit of a thick skin. As my friend Bruce with Bakerson Investments says, I'd rather get a quick no than a stretched out maybe. Number 10, listen to customers, residents, and data. This is a big one. If you love painting pictures of dogs, but you're marketing them to cat owners, then you're clearly not listening to your audience. Likewise, you need to go where your audience actually is. If most of your market audience has LinkedIn accounts, then that's where you need to be. If your audience is on Instagram, then you'd better be there. You must provide value that your audience wants, not necessarily what you want. I discovered this the hard way. I developed an email list of around 1,000 people, and I sent them all an educational series on apartment investing. I thought folks would be grateful and that they would line up to call me and find out more about investing in apartments with me. The problem is I hadn't actually found out what they wanted to really know about the subject. I noticed that the emails began to be largely ignored around the halfway point, which tells me that I provided an overload of information. As a result, I've cut the educational series in half, and I'm putting the other half up as emails and article posts on LinkedIn and as videos on my YouTube site. Conversely, this podcast is all about you guys and gals. I remember hearing about Plan Bs when I was in school a decade ago. One particular instructor spoke just as much about her side gig as she did about the particular subject, much to our chagrin as students. But I'm surprised that there hasn't been more of a concerted effort to bring all of these ideas together in one place for the community. My hope is that this podcast will help CRNAs sift through all of the different ideas and settle on the ones that make sense to them. Number 11, talk about your business. Many people start doing something on the side, but they don't tell anyone about it for fear of judgment, embarrassment, or scrutiny. As an entrepreneur, you must learn how to handle this type of self-doubt. Depending on what you're getting into, you will probably need to let people in on the secret in order to grow. Learning how to overcome that initial awkwardness through planning and repetition will be a key to your ultimate success. Social media is a big part of getting the word out there, but it can be exhausting keeping up with multiple platforms. This is where planning ahead can go a long way to reduce your headaches. Currently, you can schedule posts on both Facebook and Instagram for free, although that may be changing with the introduction of their business suite in the next few months. You can also schedule 10 posts each on three different social media accounts for free on Hootsuite. In conclusion, I want to thank you for listening to the Plan B CRNA podcast. This idea came from the fact that CRNAs are often discouraged from speaking about their various side gigs, whether due to encouraged silence in the workplace and message boards, or for fear of judgment of other CRNAs and providers. This podcast is an effort to change that, as well as the perception of Plan Bs within the community. All of us have different goals, and there are so many ways to get where we're going in life. I look forward to sharing these stories of perseverance and success with all of you. Be sure to check out our show notes for a couple of relevant articles on this subject. There are many articles and books on this subject, and I've included links to some of them there. If you're interested in learning from these stories, you can start by subscribing to the show so you don't miss an episode. Next, rate and review us on your podcast app. Leave me questions, comments, and additional topics to cover in upcoming shows. This is your podcast, and I want to tailor the content to what you want to hear. Plus, the more reviews we get, the more CRNAs we can reach. You can also reach out to me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, or just visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com. Until next time, this is Bobby Jones signing off. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.